Hey, Shad here with Speed Addicts, the fastest growing gear site on the web, and we are gonna uncrate the Arfa 1N. The wait is over, the supply chain woes definitely took their toll on delivery of the 1N, but it's finally here, move fast. Quantities are limited, unfortunately. We're here kind of getting into the summertime of 2022, and Yes, they have hit the shores, but limited, especially this Coda graphic. This is that Red Bull special. I'll go into more detail about that in a minute. But we're going to do a full breakdown of the all-new Arfa 1N that we've all been waiting a very long time for. Price point is going to come in 700 to 950 depending on what kind of uh, graphic you get on it. It is their PIM Plus material. That's like a carbon fiberglass blend, pretty typical of top-end helmets. And the weight, 3.5 ounces in a size small. Relatively lightweight, but a bit heavier than say the Arfa 11. Uh, but that is the format here. This is a, a hyper, what we'd call a hypersport or a GP helmet. This thing's comfortable on the track or very aggressive street riding. And it really, the arrow work and the quality come into play at those triple digit speeds. So a, a elongated shell design with this air diffuser, that, that stuff all adds weight, but it really pays dividends when you're in the full tuck, you're going down the straight at extremely high speeds, it's gonna keep it stable, slicing through the wind and increasing your, uh, your top end speed there. When it comes to homologations, they've got everything covered. This is the helmet of the future for HJC. They're getting ready to do battle with all the top end GP helmets, which means you have to have that FIM certification which is that uh, sanctioning body of MotoGP. Not only do they get it in the smaller sizes that the athletes typically wear, like some of the other manufacturers, they did it for the whole enchilada. So all this, the sizes from uh, two extra small all the way up to two extra large are that FIM homologation. It is DOT, so that means it's street legal to ride here in the stage, which is nice. And it is the new gen ECE 2206, which is slight improvements over the original ECE 2205. So. They position themselves to have all the latest homologations for now and into the future. This will be their flagship racing helmet for a while. We suspect this is an intermediate oval race fit with four shell sizes. So when we get into this rare air of high-end GP helmets, you want to see at least four shell sizes. More shell sizes means a closer fit to your head. So you're not wearing the same, you know, a guy in a size medium is not wearing the same shell as the guy in the 2X. You want that close race fitting helmet, four shell sizes, first shells extra two extra small, extra small, small and medium get their own shell. Sorry, they get one shell. And then large gets its own shell. Extra large 2X get the fourth and biggest shell for those larger heads. So intermediate oval, that's a common um, head shape here in the States. And it does run snug. So um, if you've had an R for 11, go with that same size, okay? It is on the snug side. If you're usually a guy, that wears a large, I'm not saying you can't get a large on your head here, it's just gonna be snug. Allow for that break in. And you know, it is, fits always subjective, right? It depends your application. Are you on the track for 20 minutes, you know, in a session, or are you gonna be wearing this on longer rides on the weekends? You might need to adjust your fit accordingly. Go by the HAC sizing chart at speedx.com. And remember the main reason to buy your helmet with Speedax. Not only will you look better and ride faster, but we cover return shipping. So. If you have a problem with fit, decide you just don't want the helmet, we cover the sh shipping to you and from you to get the helmet back should that uh, be an issue. Let's dive in and do a full rundown of all the goodies you're getting for your hard earned money here. We know this thing isn't cheap, but it is in a class all of its own, maybe with just a few neighbors. So that long design, again, this is the Red Bull collaboration. This is the first time Red Bull's allowed a manufacturer to sell a helmet with the Red Bull insignia. So not only is it Red Bull, but it's also Coda, Circuit of the Americas, uh, you know, kind of commemorating that GP stop here in the States. So HAC came out with the 1N with the Red Bull insignia, and they also have an F70 and uh, an I-50, their dirt bike helmet. So again, first time Red Bull's on a helmet from a manufacturer, so move fast. I have a feeling they won't last long and it is a limited edition run. There are other racer replicas that are gonna be out there like the Spargo and uh, also some solid colors. You'll save some money. So we're starting at $700 for the solids. More goodies. So let's talk about the ventilation. First up, we have three vents up here on the top. These first two are big panel vents, easy to switch on and off with gloves on. The middle one is not. 
Uh, I wish they put a, a better switch on this guy is really kind of hard to get after. Small nitpick, but you know, they could have done better there. That said, it is slippery, so it's not gonna drag or make noise. So maybe that was what they were going for here, but this could be a little bit more pronounced, easier to work. Down here, these are much better, these switches. Really easy to work, you're getting two of them. So you get the one that dials in the air onto your mouth, and then you get a, a separate switch, which is the blower up onto the visor to keep you free of fog and keep you cool. Around the back, kind of an interesting exhaust vent under here I'll show you that it's got this grill work, kind of cool, makes it look professional. And then another ventilation um, exhaust vent here. So you're gonna get a great vacuum exhaust that's pulling the hot air, air, hot air out and the cool air in. The EPS foam in here is also channeled. We'll show you that in a minute when we pull out the liner so that you can see. So five intake, four exhaust, lots of flow. They know that when you're on the track, very important in your riding sessions to get max cool because when you get hot, the brain fades, mistakes happen, and mistakes are expensive. So we like to avoid that. Let's talk about the face shield. Sturdy, pin lock ready, fog free, 90, 99% UV blocking. So it's tear off prepped and pin lock prepped. They're gonna include your first set of tear offs in the package, right? So tear offs in case you're running on a track where there's lots of bugs or you're getting that tire debris up on your face shield. Tear offs aren't just for motocrossers to get the mud off. They actually work quite well for debris on the track or if you're out on the street, less common, um, but they will allow you to keep your vision clear if it's buggy. And pin lock ready. They're also gonna include a pin lock insert in case you don't know. That pin lock insert is gonna install on the inside nipples of this face shield, creating a dual pane lens that mitigates, completely eliminates fog. So they got you covered on fog. One thing they're not covering is an extra face shield. So, you know, you get in this price point, HAC is usually pretty good when it comes to value. I mean, they are giving you these goodies, which is nice, but I would like to see a smoke shield because most people want them. They picture it with the smoke shield, and so it would be cool if they threw that in, but it is available, sold separately. Also, in the bag, more goodies. Let's talk about this helmet bag. This helmet bag, you can't tell because it's not on the helmet, but it's kind of like this spandex, real close, tight-fitting helmet bag. It looks cool, it looks professional, it's sexy when it's on the helmet, so they're gonna give you a bag. No deluxe carrying bag, that's another thing I usually see on GP helmets, is something like real luggage. They're not including anything like that. They are including a rear spoiler. Okay, what is this? So, adhesive attaching with like a little snap here on the back. This is for improved aero performance. Think track. I wouldn't, you know, unless you're really hitting high speeds on the street often, which is not most guys, this is kind of like the straightaway, get the extra few miles per hour out of the bike type of situation. It does add a few ounces and uh, it might bump into your, your, uh, your riding suit speed bump. So you've been worn there, but if you want the max aero performance out of the one end, they are including this extra spoiler. So you do not have to purchase that. And it even comes with its own little bag. So adhesive tape, that's what this red stuff is on here. So you're gonna stick that on and clip it on. And it, they even got a little logo here on the bottom. So that is the extra arrow work. Let's go back to the face shield and show you how this thing comes off. So we have, uh, you see this Phillips head screw? It actually has a flip out little washer that you can spin to, tw to actually undo it. You don't need a screwdriver because that flips out. So you unscrew that and it comes off super easy. Shield changes are really a breeze. You just gotta make sure you tighten this thing back up. Okay, so it's not a typical trigger system. It's got this screw system. And the face shield, it is sturdy. It's injection molded and uh, it is double locking. And what I mean by that is you're gonna press down to get that first snap and then you get this secondary lock, which again, great for the track, higher speeds, gives you that added security that you're not gonna have a, a problem or some sort of uh, malfunction at higher speeds. So you get one, two locks. This switch is a little smooth. I feel like they could have done that a little bit better uh, to work with a glove on. It does slide a little bit, but it is gonna be a secure lock once you have it totally in place here. Okay, you also got your typical nose breath deflector here. And one thing I wanna call out is that, you know, when I this showed up, we've been waiting months for this thing. Like, what is it gonna feel like? You know, they've done a, HAC was known as more of a price point manufacturer. They're the number one helmet manufacturer by volume. They make millions of helmets, right? 
but typically until the RF line, they weren't known for the high end. So I'm thinking thousand dollar helmet for this Coda version. What's the interior gonna really look like? And they did not disappoint. This is really pro level micro suede all the way around the eye port, real sexy. And then underneath here, you can see they added like this trim piece here against the micro suede. So it looks like a real professional piece. Uh, definitely a step above even the Arfa 11. And uh, let's flip this over and show you more of what we're working with here. We're gonna climb inside. Okay. The seal, the entry, pretty snug. What you'd expect from a race helmet. If you're not used to a race helmet, remember, grab your chin straps after you undo it. When you get into the helmet, pull the helmet a little bit. Helmets flex, pull it out, save your ears a bit. And remember, there will be about a 10 or 15% break in over time. So we're gonna unstrap this guy, double D ring closure, emergency quick release, release chin straps. So in case EMS has to get you out of the helmet, they can do so more delicately. We're gonna pull these out of the way and show you what's inside. You'll also notice the cheek pads are part of the neck roll. So down the line, you know, this is where helmets get beat up. You're setting this on rough surfaces, this gets all snagged. Although this is kind of like a, a leather or a vinyl material, so it will hold up pretty good. But you are able to refurbish the whole bottom of your helmet by doing your cheek pads. And speaking of cheek pads, if the fit isn't perfect the way you want it out of the box, there are some cheek pads options if you need to fine tune the fit of your Arfa N1. And if you buy it from Speed Addicts, we will help you take care of that. So that's what your cheek pad looks like. The foam, I would say, is more of like, uh, it is more of a racy foam. It's not super squishy and there's not a ton there. So break-in might be a little bit reduced. None of, the, none of the people on our team have had this helmet long enough because it just came out to tell you how much it'll break in. But, um, but yeah, the foam is a little on the denser side. So it is gonna squeeze you good and hold you in tight. When I get these uh, out of the way here, you will see that they've actually done speaker park pockets on the Arfa N1. So you wouldn't think on a racing helmet that'd be necessary, but a lot of guys are gonna be wearing this on the street. And no matter how racy the helmet is, we always get that question. Can you run a comm system on this helmet? The answer is yes, and HAC's made that a little easier on you. You see that speaker pocket right there, so you can easily run whatever comm system you want on this guy. You can do a clamp mount here, I can feel. You could probably get in there, or you just do that adhesive for your comms unit. And it is pretty cool. They did a little honeycomb texture on the inside of here. You know, every bit of this thing is finished, which is what I'd expect at this price point. Let's talk about the, the cheek pads and headliner. Their material is, uh, it's washable, antimicrobial, so it will not funk up. They use a silver, they call it a silver cool, so it's, you know, silver impregnated stuff that's meant to keep bugs from growing on it. So here is your headliner. You got snaps down here in the front and all the way in the back. channeled EPS foam to keep you cool. Show you what's going on in there. I'd say on the liner, I feel like they could have done a little bit better. Just the color or something about it. I like the, the RF11 Pro liners look a little bit more special, you know, when you're talking about the highest end helmet out there. But it is comfy, it will keep you cool, and it will keep funk from growing. So, easy to wash. Glass is friendly as well. So HAC, all their helmets, they always want eyeglasses to be workable inside of the helmet. This is no different. When it comes to eyeglasses, again, subjective. Depends on the rider's face shape and the frame, but most glasses will fit in here. And then the last thing we didn't touch on is the eye port. Huge eye port. And one thing that makes it more of a racing helmet as opposed to a street helmet is that eye port position. So it's, it's meant to be in a tuck. Not to say you couldn't wear it, in a more upright position, but it is at more at home at that tuck, and that is that long shape, that GP arrow work. So, my impression is I've handled hundreds of helmets over the years. HAC really brought it here. You know, it, our expectations were high. We waited a long time for this helmet. It showed up, it didn't disappoint. You're getting all the bells and whistles and a full five year warranty. So, if you wanna try the latest and greatest from HAC, head over to speedx.com. Pick up an Arfa 1N. You won't be sorry. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time to find out what is in the crate.